Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another request, this time from Teenpin. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And I'll get to it as soon as I can. And this is for Avengers Age of Ultron, the second of the Avengers films. And one that got crapped on a lot. One that a lot of people deemed as the worst one. And oh well the first one's so great. And then Infinity War and Endgame. Man those were game changers. But oh this one is just bad. And it's terrible. And oh they screwed up Ultron. And all this other stuff. Listen I never read a comic involving Ultron. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I'm some comic book expert. That read 85 comics that I never did. And hey, if you read the comments and they mess something up, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about that. And I am guarantee you Infinity War and them were not like the comics either. I guarantee you Endgame was not like the comics either. So I don't know how they get the pass, but this does not. But whatever. What I know is I really enjoy this film. As a piece of entertainment. As a piece of popcorn fun. I still think this is pretty damn solid and it's still one of my favorite MCU films and you know how much I rag on the MCU especially of late but it's my favorite Avengers film it would of the, from 2008 to now of Marvel films it would be in my top five because I know like Iron Man would be in there and Captain America, like Captain America Winter Soldier. This film. Because for me personally, this is what I wanted out of an Avengers movie. We have them together, so understand. Okay, the first film, you had to establish them, get them together, you gotta establish them, how they work together. And how they don't work as a team. Well now that's settled. We get this really good action sequence. Where most of them get their time to shine. We get some nice humor of bonding. But it's not a joke every five minutes. It's not Hulk giving breakfast tacos. It's not Star Lord somehow getting the drop on Spider-Man. Even though Spider-Man has Spidey sense. And then so we have this you know. All this other crap. It's not Chris Hemsworth getting fat and trying to make Lebowski jokes. It's there is humor and it works well, but a lot of times there's stuff that's taken serious. I love James Spader as the villain, and you say, okay, well the villain is being kind of j joking, but I thought it made sense here because he is a semblance of Tony Stark to the fact that when he's compared to Tony Stark he gets pissed off of being compared to Tony Stark but he's kind of the son of Tony Stark and I kind of wish even more of that was played up a Robert Downey Jr. versus James Spader and a little bit more of that dichotomy of the two of them I wish a little bit more could have been delved into that because I know James Spader and Robert Downey Jr. have known each other for a long time. I think there's a lot more that could have been done with just the two of them. And back and forth with each other. I would like to have had a couple more scenes of the two of them kind of verbal jousting back and forth. I also think there's some good drama that could be capitalized through that. But when I look at it as a film... A lot of the characters, I thought were done in a respectful fashion. Robert Downey Jr. and his fear that with the help or the hurt of Scarlet Witch, who's introduced in this, that affects his mind a bit, so he gets a bit more paranoid, gives that push, where he wants to build, you know, Go more gun ho about the suit of armor around the world because of these aliens that come in. Again, what he wasn't doing that just willy nilly. It was with the little bit of dousing from the Scarlet Witch, which then leads to this mistake of 
Ultron. I think Robert Downey Jr. has a bit to play with. Captain America, he has a lot of good badass moments, even from the beginning. Like the whole opening where they're doing this Hydra station, and you get to see the Avengers working together. One of the few times you get to see them work together in an action scene like this. Because, yes, you have the finale in New York, to be fair. You have that. But after this, they're split up and they're doing this and that because the events of Captain America Civil War. And they're split up either over there on the planet fight Thanos or here in Wakanda and then... Endgame has just this weird shifting back and forth for tones. That's a whole other thing. But here it just felt more consistent. And you really see them working together in the snow. And Robert Downey Jr. attacking. And Thor using his hammer. Captain America even throws his motorcycle into a truck. Hawkeye getting his moments to shine. You have a little bit of the character dynamic where... Someone curses, Iron Man curses, and Cap says language. And then Robert Downey's like, Wait, are we just gonna not stop and take in that Cap just said language? Hey, it's force of habit. See, that's a little bit of a character moment that works well for the proceedings. You know, Thor and Captain America working together with their hammer and shield and taking out these men in this damn tank. You know, Captain America kicking his shield into this guy named Baron Strucker. You see them working together and kicking ass and taking names. And they get this device they're looking for, the scepter that Loki had. But you have these villains and they have these two superhumans, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, who have a bit of a grudge to settle with the Avengers. They Star which affects some of the team members' minds. You get a little bit of their character work where you see a bit of a backstory of Black Widow. Which hell I thought this backstory worked better than the entire movie of Black Widow. But I heard I got more out of Black Widow and what type of stuff she's been through in that one little mind fuckery. Than the entire movie of Black Widow. Not even exaggerating. Where how strict it was. And how scary painful it was. Robert Downey Jr. having the fear. Which of course we come to know is, is Thanos. So that something is coming. And even you know, Thor. Knows in that hey something's coming. And then he's got to later on leave to try to figure out a bit more what this is. And pretty much there to explain to the team what the Infinity Stones are. Because we're going to set it up for Infinity War. So Mark Ruffalo and Robert Downey Jr. They worked with the Scepter. They tried to deal with this AI. They're down for the night, but the AI has a life of its own as the voice of James Spader. And I'm a big James Spader fan. I know a lot of people do not like Ultron. They think he was weak. They didn't think he was dangerous. They thought he was taken out a bit too quickly. Which, I mean, you could argue that with almost every villain in the MCU. But I thought James Spader, I liked his personality as Ultron. I liked the way he looked in the film. I think James Spader had a good sinister voice, but also humorous cadence. Which worked as a kind of a stepchild for Tony Stark. And again, just his voice I thought was perfect for that character. I just wish we could have seen him more. I mean, part of me wish he was the big bad villain and not Thanos. Because I know everyone loves Thanos except me. I never gave a shit about Thanos. And I know 100% of the people will disagree with me. I think Thanos was one of the big mistakes the MCU made. Because everything was building up to this guy and so many times we had to stop the movies to build up this event that's going to come later. How many times did the movie had to stop to go, oh, here's Thanos and here's the Infinity Stone and it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. 
all set up for these two films, Infinity War and Endgame, was it really worth stopping all of these other films to stop for five minutes or two minutes of total time to talk about these damn stones so we could go up to this fucking thing that I think both movies suck. I know I'm alone on that because they made a lot of money. But I just never gave a shit about Thanos. I never did. I know I'm alone on that. I don't care about Thanos. When I watched, it's not Josh Brolin's fault, but honestly, I liked him more in Deadpool 2. I'm sorry, just the, his character, his motivation, what he's trying to get. Just never cared. Never cared about the super glove either, the, the, the power glove. I know the Infinity Gauntlet. I never gave a rat's ass about any of that. Just I don't. I can't help it. I just do not. I like I like that you get more of the team together here. Because they really are together for most of the film. And even the bit when they're have they're celebrating after getting the scepter and they're testing out the hammer and no one else can lift the hammer, but Cap lifts it a little bit and Thor's word for a second. But then he kind of cools down when Cap can't lift it. And I think it was funny, like, the ways they're trying to lift it and all that stuff. I thought that was funny. I thought they played to the characters. It was a nice scene for levity. And I still found it entertaining and funny to this day. And the movie doesn't go too far without having an action scene. I think it's well paced. You have this great action at the beginning where each one gets their moments to shine. You have this one shot trying to do all in one take where... Thor's doing all this, and Captain Mirror's riding a motorcycle and throwing people and throwing his shield, and then I wish we could have seen a bit more of the Hulk. We see him a little bit. We'd like to have seen a bit more, but Iron Man has his moments. Like Hawkeye gets his moment. Like what? Are, this is the best we get to see Jeremy Renner as well as Hawkeye. I mean, I heard the TV show he was on. They didn't even do much shit with him because they had to have a female Hawkeye to take over. Like, this is the best usage Jeremy Renner got with Hawkeye. Where Tony Stark screws up, Ultron's created, you get this fight with these robots, which there's some fun bits of action there. Again, Jane Spader is killing it as the voice and the persona of Ultron. Thor is taken seriously as a character. Where he's lifting Iron Man, Tony Stark, and he's like, I have more than enough words to describe you, Stark. He's not being goofy, silly, he's not being stupid, he's not throwing stuff and it hits him in the damn face. He's not looking like the fat fucking Bid Lebowski or, you know, do a Google Gaga eyes or the Guardians of the Galaxy or other bullshit. Thor's actually taking it seriously because I know Joss Whedon was a, apparently a prick on set, but he seemed to know what the hell he was doing as a filmmaker, and as a writer. That's, that still does not condone his behavior. Let me make sure on to get that clear. Don't be a prick on set. I mean, James Cameron was a prick on set too, on Aliens, The Abyss, but he was probably the same type of prickish as Joss Whedon, but James Cameron gets the pass. I'm like, no, then if, if Jaws Whedon's so bad, then James Cameron's that bad too. And you just see footage of him treating people like shit. But, you know, again, he gets the pass. Because he made Avatar, Titanic. Which I prefer these films. But anyway. But yeah, I do think Jaws Whedon knew more what he was doing than these other Avengers films later on. Because as much as I have issues with the first Avengers, I'd rather watch that even uh, more so than Endgame or Infinity War. Just those films just never did nothing for me. I know people love them, teach their own. I just can't, could never get into those films. I like the way the characters work with each other in this film. I like the way they talk to each other. Mark Ruffalo is a dumbass in real life. He did fine here as the Hulk, as Bruce Banner. There's some good, like, serious moments between him and Black Widow. I know people thought that whole thing was stupid. 
that Star Johansson, Mark Ruffles' character, you have this little bit of a romance thing. I don't understand what's so stupid about that. I mean, the first Avengers, you have her going up to Mark Ruffalo and kind of easing him to the fold. With her line of work, she sees someone who's a bit smart and caring, but can be very dangerous too. And with how her backstory was, people make fun of that. I actually think that works rather well. To see what the hell they do later? Black Widow was an Indian, which she just goes and dies, and yeah, let's do a movie of hers after she dies, and then Mark Ruffalo, like, playing patty cake, getting his ass hit by his piece of shit cousin, She-Hulk, the bitch. So I like the bits between Black Widow and Mark Ruffalo. I know a thing that got people's butt up their ass was when she tells her backstory about how they sterilized her because it's more efficient. And she said the line, like, you're not the only one who's a monster. And people got a butt up their ass. Oh, my God. Just because she can't have a kid means she's a monster? No, because she feels like she was mutilated. That doesn't mean you agree. In fact, you're not supposed to agree because we know she's not a monster. I know, and you know, and Bruce Banner knows she's not a monster. It's like people who get like a star in their face. And they say they're a monster. Doesn't mean you believe they're a monster. They believe it because something part of them was taken away without their say so. If someone you know, hit my fucking, you know, took my ear off or made it, you know, took my balls away or something, I would feel like a monster too. And they'd be like, oh, because you can't, you know, have kids. No, because something was done to me that wasn't my choice. That was done to be more of a weapon. I got what Joss Whedon was doing for it, but people got to budge up their ass about it. <laughs> so do you have, you know, a bunch of dumbass characters in Black Widow that you don't give a fuck about? But you'd be fine with that, I guess. I like the work between Captain America and Iron Man in this movie, where... You know, Iron Man tries to stay his case. Where Iron Man is like, he's scared about the future and we'll lose. Yeah, you know, how you fight that together? Well, we're going to lose. Well, then we'll do that together too. As much as Tony Stark gets annoyed by it, he can, you can tell by his demeanor he appreciates, and him not firing back verbally, that he appreciates Cap's words and Cap's honesty and can appreciate his optimism. Like, I like Cap's line, anytime someone tries to end a war before it starts, innocents die. Which, sadly, is a true at, you know, true fact. I didn't mind the scene when... Hell, Ultron could be fairly violent. They see Andy Serkis, because uh, to get, like, weapons and especially... Uh, metal that's from Wakanda, Wakanda's mentioned in this... The same metal that created Captain America's shield. And cuts Andy Serkis' arm off. Like, you see Ultron cut Andy Serkis' arm off. I forgot about that. I went, oh, shit. <laughs> and again, I liked... See, I could see, like, reflecting, like, so many other villains try to be like this. Well, actually, I'm trying to think. See, I thought Ultron had a personality. And that's what I liked about him. I liked his personality. How, yes, he would throw in like little verbal jobs, but at the same time, he had his own mission in mind. And the way James Spader said it, you believe that's what he believed in. I didn't mind the bits with Hulk Buster versus Hulk. I remember when I reviewed this. Well, uh, well, yeah, I guess I did. Back in the day, the review's long gone, Sally. I think it's long gone. But 
I remember when, like, there was a guy, I forget his name, he had a bug up his ass because this film sucked because look how they, the Hulk Buster beat the Hulk, and that's bullshit. And I just thought, man, if you only knew what was going to happen to the Hulk later, I can imagine if he was that pissed about the way the Hulk was in this movie, we actually has some moments, like even in the fight with Hulkbuster, there's a bit where like, he spits out his teeth, and Tony Stark gets scared. I'm sorry. And Hulk, like, he's like tearing into the, uh, the the Hulkbuster. And the bit's at the end where he's like smacked in Ultron, and he saves Black Widow, and that beautiful 360 shot where all of them, including Hulk, get their moments to shine. I can imagine what the hell this guy would feel like with Infinity War when he got his ass hit by Thanos in 30 seconds. Or when... I don't even think he fought Thanos in, in, in Endgame, right? He was a smart Hulk, so he, it's, he used, you know, he could do the power glove, the Infinity Gauntlet, to try to snap people back to life. Trying to think, uh, She Hulk. God, She Hulk. Even Thor Ragnarok. You think about the fight that Th Thor has with Hulk. You could say that was a lesser fight for Hulk to really get his moments to shine compared to this. Just like Thor not really giving it his all until he does and then does the lightning bits and was kicking Holt's ass until Jeff Goldblum knocked him out. Again, yeah, that guy's head must have exploded to a million pieces if he saw She-Hulk. I, I would argue this is the last time Hulk with Mark Ruffalo was worth a shit. You could, you could easily argue that. You could easily argue that. And again, Jeremy Renner, I'm a fan of the actor. I like the actor quite a bit. I like that Hawkeye had more because, in, you know, in the first, he was mind-controlled, then he got out of the mind-control, then he helped out a bit at the third ad. Here, we see his wife, we see his kids. When they need refuge, he takes them home and... Kind of becomes one of the big hearts of the movie. Especially, I love his bit when he's talking with Strong Witch where she's scared and she doesn't know what to do. And he's like, hey listen, we're fighting robots and I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. But listen, you walk out there, no matter what, you're an Avenger. And granted, and that's the sad thing. When, you, when I watch this film, I just see... Where they took these characters. And that's why, like, what's great about this film, for the most part, is just... Well, even like the first film. It's a standalone. The Others is part of this one-two punch where it ends everything. And just the way the characters come to their conclusion... Is not that satisfying to me. Just when you... Okay, yes, yeah, my soda talking to me. Like, what the hell does that sound? Before I do more, let, let's let's really go into each of these characters. What go? What happens to them? Captain America. It's funny at the end of the film. After they, it's all said and done, and I, I the whole finale action scene. The fine Ultron's robots. I think there's a lot of cool moments that the characters get. Especially if there's a moment in all the MCU that perfectly encapsulates comic book. Is that one scene where they're all together protecting the stain so Ultron doesn't get it. They're fighting the Ultron army and the camera goes in this 360. Where they're all fighting in slow-mo and they each get their moments. And you see like cuts of like doing this 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 like it was comic book panels and like that whole scene is pure comic book fantasy come to life that's like watching a comic book panel come to life 
and I think it's one of the best scenes in an MCU movie by far. I love the creation of Vision. I like the way they did that. They really built up like Vision was going to be an important character and it was a strong character. Like they gave him a really good entrance in this, in which they really showed us that he was an important piece of the puzzle. That they really propped up his vision, you know, is a you know, very fairly known Avenger in the comics. But yeah, Captain America at the end, where Tony starts talking to him about so, you know, you maybe one day you'll be like Jeremy Renner, like Hawkeye, have a family, family stability. And then kind of Cap looks at him and goes, well, the guy who wanted that, he went in the ice 75 years ago. I think someone else came out of that. Here I'm home. Meaning... He has accepted the fact that he cannot have a family. He's accepted the fact that, you know what, the guy 75 years ago, you know, wanted the, the last dance and stuff, but this is who I am. I've accepted this. This is my choice in life, is to lead the Avengers and help people. Which they completely did completely shit on that at Avengers Endgame where it's like, yeah, I'll take the Infinity Stones back, but I'm going to fucking retire so I get my last dance and I'm going to just sit on my ass for 75 years and watch all the atrocities in America happen. Where I'm Captain America and I could have done a whole lot of shit because now I have all this knowledge of what I could and couldn't do, but I'm not going to try to fucking help because I need to see here on my fucking old ass with a, but the shield of my sphincter, watching 9-11, watching all the wars, all the other shit happen, and hey, if it happens, it happens, that's how history happens, shit happens, oh well, I got to have my last dance, I, I did get to have my family life, which here he says, the guy winning that 75 years ago, someone else came out, apparently not, because when he had the chance, he went right back to it. And, like, I did it, like, I'm a fan of Captain America, and in a way, that's a happy ending he got, because he did a lot. And uh, I guess of the characters, like, that's the one I would, like, kind of try to deal with, because it was a reward he deserved. I did that, but at the same time, you could say, like, Captain America doesn't quit, and by doing that, he kind of fucking quit. <laughs> he kind of quit. So it just kind of, I don't know. If he... Was somehow he did something where he was he thought he was going to die, and then he got brought back, but then he got zapped his powers. So he's back to the scrawny Steve Rogers. Ah, uh, there's no way you'd look at me like that. And she's like, "Well, I like who you are. Yeah, you looked a bit thinner and you looked a bit shorter, but..." You're the same in here. So what do you want to say? And the strong Steve Rogers, he doesn't have any powers. He's back to who he was. He thought he was going to die, but fate, luck, karma brought him here. At this time period, that was important in his life. And then he got to live that life that he never got to live. That I could deal with because he didn't quit. He was, He did something noble. And lo and behold, the universe decided to reward someone, finally, for doing something noble, and here you go. That, I think, would have been more to my liking. Iron Man, he, you know, he dies. He did the right thing, but, you know, he dies. Until they bring him back to be Dr. Doom. <laughs> Hulk, he became more and more of a fucking pussy. He got his ass kicked by Thanos in 30 seconds. He was so much of a pussy. He never came back for the rest of the fucking movie. Even though the trailers said, oh, there's Hulk and Wakanda. And that was a lie. Then he became this, you know, yes, smart Hulk was in the comics. But then he was a Steve Urkel looking at the motherfucker getting selfies. And, hey, you want a breakfast taco? Then he became more of a pussy with She-Hulk. That pansy ass bitch. I know my friend Afri loves the Hulk and it just blew his fucking mind in a bad way out of his ass 
when he saw that shit. I know Team Pen mentioned maybe one day he'll request a She-Hulk. Just sadly those reviews are gone, but if he ever does, I'll do it and I'll give that a tearing that new asshole if he does. Black Widow, she dies alone. They really do nothing with the whole Mark Ruffalo, Scarlet jo like Bruce Banner, but they do nothing with that. They do nothing with that in those movies. They just drop that whole thing. Vision, who the fuck is Vision nowadays? The only thing he did in Infinity War Endgame is get his stone taken. That's it. And then became like the husband, the Scarlet Witch, when she had a whole damn town under siege and kidnapped. <laughs> Vision has a done squat. They completely wasted Vision. Here they propped him up as important character, Joss Whedon and his team did. Then they did nothing with him but made him a bitch. Star Witch. She took over a whole town, but yet she was the good guy. But like, maybe someone drew a brain and said, yeah, that's pretty villainous. So she became a villain who murdered a bunch of people and cleaned Patrick Stewart. And Mr. Fantastic turned him into noodles and spaghetti. Hawkeye? He finally got a show that he wasn't even really the star of. There's some other lady had to be the star because we need a female Hawkeye because fuck Jeremy Renner, he's a guy. Like the beginning of Endgame, they had this little bit where he's a kind of a vigilante, but then nothing really went forward with that because we have more important things to do. Quicksilver dies, but here he died in a way where he he saved Hawkeye and this little kid. So it was a noble death. Is anyone I'm missing? Thor became just a goofball because Chris Hemsworth wanted to be part of the Cool Kids Club and said, hey, I want to be part of the Cool Kids Guardians of the Galaxy Club too. So Thor's going to be silly and goofier and rad and rock and even more so Love and Thunder and more so in, in the other films. Infinity War, up, I don't, rad and rock, I don't need a hammer. I'm the god of thunder, not the god of hammers. And if any war, shit, I do need a hammer. Only oh, I need a bigger hammer. No, instead I need an axe. Then in uh, end game, up oh, I fucked up. I didn't aim for the head, so I did become a fat ass and made Lebowski jokes, or people made Lebowski jokes about me. And then. I get my ass kicked, and Captain America has to be the badass to use a hammer and a shield, because Thor is too much of a fat fuck loser. And then Lemon Thunder is more of a loser. This is like the last time a lot. Look, maybe Captain America Civil War, you just say. That, like, the last time a lot of these characters really were worth the shit. Worth the crap. Going up dress against a villain that has personality and has a great acting, great voice by James Spader. That's a fun villain, but there's a sinister edge to him. Yes, I wish, you know, Ultron, like I said, I wish there was a bit more between him and Robert Downey Jr., Yes, I wish there was a couple more scenes of Ultron really being a vicious, more of a vicious villain. Like, he cut Andy Serkis' arm off. I wish he did a bit more of that kind of stuff throughout it. To be even darker of a film. But yeah, I like the action scenes. I like Captain America fighting Ultron on top of the truck, then in this train. Uh, the finale... Where they're saving the people and they're, they have the moments to shine. 
the setup at the end where you have the new Avengers, which is a Vision and Star Witch and was a War Machine and Anthony Mackie in them. Kind of like the Avengers West Coast type of thing. But I really do like this film. I really think it's a fun movie. That I don't have a whole lot of problems with. Like, it was nice to watch this again. I do put it up there with the first Iron Man and Captain Baker Winter Soldier and, you know, the first Doctor Strange and Guardians of the Galaxy. I really do. And I don't, I never understood the hate for it. I never did. And I probably would say this is the most underrated MCU film. As I'm talking about, it is the most underrated MCU film. With the amount of shit people gave it and continue to give it, I don't agree with it. So if you hate it, teach their own. I think it's miles better than anything MCU has done in a long ass time. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye for now.